recording. You can. Recording. Okay. So what you're looking at right here is the tools that I typically use to go hunting stone with. And I, I catalog and collect data on the stones that I pick up. Make notations of their locations. And then, you know, some of them I, I choose to salvage, you know, and keep. To make use of for later and other ones I just, you know, leave in place. But I always make a record of it. I always make a record of that. So I got some pretty neat stuff to share with you folks today. I'll show you a couple of the things I got right here. Right here. That's of course my badger shaped bark stripping tool. And as you can see, it just perfectly looks like a badger. Yeah. The snout right there, that's what, that's what does the actual bark cutting. So we're going to use that today. And then I've got this stone fish here that looks like a prehistoric fish. Let me check that out. I find these quite often. This is a turtle's head. The mouth is uh, intended to actually hold on to something. See, this is a turtle's head, and its mouth is actually intended to hold on to something. So yeah, I'm just showing you some of the stuff that you can that you can find. I got this pink, green, and white jade bearing block that I found. Not for drilling holes or whatever. Yeah, find a lot of those too. This is a piece of Amherst flint or flint from England. English, English flint. So this this had to have come after you know 1492. And then, of course, for you know, doing the actual stone hunting, I usually carry this little folding shovel. Use a brush. I use this as a measurement scale, you know, in the photography, you know, because you can, you know, you can scale the size of something. Each one of these is one inch. Okay, so enough of that. Those birds are right over there. All right. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to take that badger stone of mine. We're going to take this stone right here and. I'm going to show you folks how to use this tool to strip birch bark off of a tree. Yeah. And once once I show you how to use this, you'll understand why why you know natives wanted to use this tool for that. I mean, not only is it really elegant, I mean it's really cool. I mean, it's really nice. I mean it's a, it's a fun tool to use for doing jobs that maybe aren't quite so fun, you know. So it's a way of making it fun. But, you know, it's also a static conclusion to look at. So, using this to do that kind of work with kind of, kind of makes it better, you know, makes it more fun. And 
So we're gonna probably use the badger stone today. And yeah, right back here at the same place. And something I wanna show you about this tree right here. About that tree right there. <coughs> I'm gonna use the other camera. Up in the top of this tree, there it is. There's a bend in it, right up there. And that bend in the tree is a Native American symbol that represents the Sali people. That's T S A L I, the Sali Native. And the symbol that they used was uh, the uh, woodpecker. And so right there, you, right there, you're seeing a representation of that in wood. And, and you, you see that, that in a lot of trees. You see the the woodpecker represented in a lot of wooden carving structures that the that the natives had. And so I wanted to show you that. And these trees, these trees that are, that are stripped in half, you see that's just straight up half a tree right there, you know, it's half a tree all the way up. And what the natives would do, What the natives would do is they would they would score into the tree down near the base, and then they'd they'd strike the side of it with a hammer, and they would pop a, a splinter up on the living tree, and then they'd pry that off and you know tear the wood off, just like I showed you how to tear wood off of the the shattered trees, the tree trunk, that shattered tree trunk that I pulled the, the wood off of that I'm showing you right now. That was the method. You go up to a live tree, you cut into the bottom of it, you pop a piece loose, and you yank it off. And you use those pieces of wood to make your, your tools and stuff out of. And so that's why you see so many trees that look like this. They're just exactly half a tree all the way up. And a lot of people think that maybe lightning got to it or something like that. That's not lightning. That's not lightning damage. That's, that's that's natives tearing the trees apart. There's another one right down here that I'm going to show you. I'll jog down here real quick. Let's make this quick. There's another one right. There's another one right there. You see that? Yeah, this one's dead now. And it used to be alive. But you can see it's got the same thing going on. You can see right down there at the base where it was just cut horizontally right across the bottom. And then then they'd rip the bark off of it. And then they'd start digging into the wood itself. You know, so you remove the bark that way to get to get rope material. And then you can keep digging into the tree and tear the whole thing apart. <laughs> and that's what the natives were doing. Well, that's a really, really interesting bit of trivia right there. Those two, those two things. The Solly Woodpecker. And the half strip trees. Were a Native American life practice that where they that's how they got their tools. Yeah, that, that's how we got the equipment for the tools. That's how we did it.
Woodpecker, you see the beak up there? I love that dead piece of wood makes the beak of that. Right there. So that's really, really interesting. You know, I'm, I come out here looking for stones. You know, this is a stone working site. I made a prior video here at this place. And still, it's sitting right exactly where I left it. But, ah, this, this place has got a history that there's so much more than just making some stone works out here. I mean, this, this place has some stories to tell. And that stone right there, that looks a lot like ocean jasper. Yeah, that looks like ocean jasper right there. This one resembles ocean jasper, but those spots that you see, that's lichen growing on there. Like they were tearing this stone apart too for some reason. I don't know what they were getting off of it. But this this stone right here. That stone right there is the stone that will tell the story of this whole entire spot right here. You know, I could just figure out what it was for, what they were what they were doing with it. ready to come apart. You know, this, this slab, this whole entire slab right here is ready to just pop right off in one single piece. And you can separate it right there too where that fracture is. There's a fracture right there that could be, that could be used to tear that apart. And as you can see, that crack goes all the way around it. Yeah, it goes all the way around and follow it. Follow it, that fracture goes, goes all the way. So that piece of rock is ready to just pop right off of there. And it wouldn't take much of a wedge and a couple taps with a hammer to just lift it right up. Now stones are really hard and they're really heavy, but if you use the right tools and you use those tools in the proper manner, the stone becomes really easy to work. So it's not a problem to work. It's always a problem to pick up, but it's usually never a problem to work. You know, folks, I keep listening for signs of forest people and stuff like that, but you know, I just never seem to have any encounters when I come out in the woods. I've heard so many people talk about having encounters. Yeah, I've heard so many people talk about having encounters out in woods. Maybe not this woods that I'm in right now, but you know, I'll go out. I'll go out. I'll, I'll hoop. You know, whoop! Storage cart is full on that. Mm, okay. Let us take a pause and I'll change storage carts. And right up there at the top of the tree, you can see that dead branch comes out to the side. That spot right there. That's one of those motives. And yeah, I mean, it's gone into disrepair now. It's ruined. But you always find you always find the solid woodpecker at the top of a half tree like that. It's recording. All right. So 
yeah, what I wanted to do is kind of demonstrate how to how to use this tool right here. I want to kind of demonstrate how to use this. Yeah, that right there is. Yeah, this little tool right here is one of the nicest stones that I've ever found as far as something like this goes. And I don't even really like using it to demonstrate with, but it's got to be done, you know? So first, before we go do that, Yeah, so what I'm doing right now, folks, is packing up my gear. And, you know, I like to make sure I don't forget anything, so I, you know, I pack the stuff away carefully. And uh, We're going to continue on to the next part of the video. So if you just be patient for a moment while I pack up my stuff, we'll get the show on the road. And the strange thing is, after I had the problem with the camera shutting off, I didn't have any more encounters or didn't notice anything going on but right before I was leaving there was two royal woodpeckers that were talking to each other through the woods and I was able to get a recording of them hammering on the trees which I thought was really really neat So, that goes to show you the power of the wild forces that be. They must have heard me talking about them. Oh so, yeah, that kind of stuff is really neat. And, you know, that good, good things for stories to tell around the campfire. You know? And that, that's how legends are built. And that was the actual recording of the sound that I had recorded that I just played. So you, you got to hear that too. demonstrate you know what I like to what I like to do with these demonstrate what I like to do with this stuff right here you know I never really finished what I was doing here the other day I'm lay that right there that right there and you know, as you as you strip thin layers of material off sweep it away and exposes the stones like like that little stone right there These are always buried in roots. They have roots grown around them, grown into them. So it makes them hard to get out sometimes. You know, and then if you need to measure, you know, it's like that, that stone is roughly one inch by an inch and a half. You know, it's, gives you something to judge the scale of what you're looking at yeah so this is a scale rod you can use it to measure with and it also it also helps the viewer of the photos be able to set a scale on what they're looking at so they know if something is large small whatever yeah and what is that Yeah, so you know, when you're doing archaeology, you don't dig deep holes. What you do is you just lightly scrape thin layers away, and you know, even this dirt, this dirt right here, 
should be broken up and sifted to be analyzed for you know, pollen grains and other stuff, you know. There's even smaller things that you can miss like uh, little glass beads and things like that that will be trapped in the soil and you can't really see them when you're just digging through it. So, you know, if you're really... If you're really going through an area and trying to, you know, analyze what's actually there, you've got to do all the work. You've got to, you got to sift through the soil. And see what's there. Yeah. Okay. So, all too many times you'll pull stones up that are all, all of them have, you know, broken angular edges to them. And, but the typical stone that should be in this area are all stones that have rounded over edges, you know, like river, river stones, river cobbles. Discover this in real time. Look at that. There's a see that green stone right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just totally green. You see, if you don't, you know, go slow and kind of sift through the soil as you as you do this, you'll, you'll miss a lot of stuff like that. And when you look in there, you see a lot of you know small broken pebbles like that right there, and that one right there. And I would expect to see that right here, right here under this tree. Now this tree right here is where this actual stone working was happening. And then right down here is another spot where the whole entire top of that rock has been shattered off. From, you know, placing something on top of it and then being struck on. So I would say that that spot right there was smashed by a machine very much like the Great Cracker that I described in a prior video, which is basically the machine that can be used to hammer on objects to either make them move or to make them break. Number two. <coughs> All right, so we found that that little green stone right there. Okay, so that has to be thoroughly cleaned. Yeah, I, I didn't come here to take a bunch of stuff or anything like that, folks. I, I'm trying to just demonstrate this stuff for you guys so that you can do this when you want to. Oh, yeah, 
I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm not actually trying to trying to collect and gather anything right now. I'm, I'm just doing this for the purpose of the video. Ah, oh, sun feels so good. It's about 30 degrees out here right now. You can see. But yeah, the sun feels good. So I would do something like that right there. Put this up. There's all kinds of really cool stuff that you can find. I, I happen to love finding these little prehistoric stone fish. And whoever it was that lived in this area was extremely good at making these. Yeah, I, I, I found a bunch of them so far. right there huh. yeah that might be that might be a piece of glass from the 1500s I find a lot of that kind of stuff around here too and yeah, little glass shards Okay, so like I said, you score into it, you know, you score into the bark. Yeah, even though this is just a, a dull-ended stone, it's still... Yeah. 
has friction. Still has friction right there at the tip of the nose. Where it, where it does, it goes right in there. It gets right in, gets right in that bark and peels it up. Right? Well then, then what you do is you carefully, carefully work that bark off. You carefully work the, the snout of the badger. Up under the bark and It'll, it'll peel it right up, see? Right? And you, you might think you can just peel that right off of there, but you can't. You gotta, you gotta keep working it slowly. Yeah, it takes practice. It takes practice. You gotta go slow at it. You gotta kind of work it off. Slowly, methodically. If you really take your time with it, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, kind of like skinning a deer or something, you know. like skinning a deer. See, where you're just kind of... pulling the bark away from the tree itself. See, so it's kind of like... It's kind of like skinning the... Skinning a deer or something like that. Grab onto the bark and kind of give a little bit of a pull. There we go. See? See, that's all there is. That's all there is to it. You can come over to this side. Alright, well, I kind of wrecked it. Wrecked it a little bit, but that's alright. I was just demonstrating how to get it off. I wasn't actually planning on doing anything with it. And this tree is, um, yeah. This tree is, that is uh, marked to be cut down in a couple of days. So that's why I'm using this tree right here. Otherwise, otherwise I probably would have chosen something else. So you can do this to a live tree and it'll survive, but you really don't want to. You know? you, like I said, this tree, and, this tree, and several other trees that are in here that are that have disease in them are going to be cut out in, in a few days. So, you know, we'll take care of those then. But that's literally how easy it is, folks. That's literally how easy it is to use that badger tool to get to get bark off of a tree. You, know, you just cut into it with a snout and. And then peel it out like you were skinning a, a deer or something. It's really easy. And you can get as big a piece as you want. This is actually a small tree. I usually don't even mess with trees this little when I go to get something like that. I'll, I'll get a great big tree. The bigger they are, the better the bark is. The more pliable the bark will be. And the smaller the tree is, the thinner the bark is, and the harder it is to work. So that, that's just a, a simple, easy tip. And I always try to resource birch bark from dead trees, like that dead tree right there, before I'll take from a live one. But to, today, for the purpose of using the badger, I had to show you how to get it off of a live tree.
yeah, that's that's really really cool. And so that, that's what the birch birch badger is all about. dead birds park right there if someone could use yeah dead or live that's always a choice you got to make when you're when you're using bark you know barks tree bark and stuff like that you, know, you can use it dead or you can use it live there's a there's a reason why you'd use both yeah you know? in the case of birds bark um, you know, if you're making a boat, you really, really need live, live bark to bark from a live tree. But if you're using that bark to make birch oil out of, um, if you try to make birch oil from the bark of a live tree, all you'll get is a can full of water and you'll get no oil. Same thing with uh, trees that provide rope, you know, rope making materials, you know, the bark, rope bark. You get bark from a live tree, well, you have to partially decay the bark to make it useful, you know. So, in other words, you got to soak it in water for two to three weeks until it starts falling apart in long strips, and then you can use it. Or if you get the same bark off the trunk of a dead tree, it's already partially decayed, it's already stripping off into thin strips, and you don't need to soak it in water. You know, so you know, it's always a choice. It's always a choice, you know. And, and in the case of birch bark, if you need the birch oil and all you have is live trees, you gotta cut the bark off. Let that bark completely dry out, let all the moisture water come out of it. And then after it's dry. After it's dead and dry, then you can burn it in the fire and get the oil out of it. So you just have to know how to use the material. Yeah. And that that's a harsh that's a hard lesson you don't want to learn on the fly out in the woods. You know, that's why I'm telling you in this video. You don't want to learn that lesson on the fly. You go in already knowing you know what to do and you'll be far better off. Far better off. Yeah, you don't want to do that kind of stuff just you know, without knowing what you're doing because all it does is waste your time. And it can ruin a perfectly good tree too. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to that you don't want to ruin. You know, and that's why activists are activists, is because people do not so smart things, you know. And I try to change all that by by doing really intelligent stuff. And sharing the knowledge, you know, the main thing is share the knowledge. My name is Trapper Jack. Smash that like button. Tell me what you think about this video. Thank you for watching.